Welcome back to ZQ1 Plays, where today we are going to be ranking the main series Pokemon titles in uh, basically quality and then kind of inside the tiers, how much I appreciated them personally, uh, kind of how they rank in terms of my favorite ones. And so, uh, yeah, let's get into it right now together. As always, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot for my small channel. Also, I'd just like to say a like or a subscription go a long way in helping this small channel grow, so please consider doing so if you feel so inclined. Now, with all of that being said, let's get right into it. And again, they're going to be going into the tiers by overall quality, but then inside the tiers, they'll be ranked by which ones are my favorite. Let's start with Pokemon Red and Blue. These are A-tier experiences. Um, incredible foundational games to the entire series and uh, I personally have played blue have not played red but I know they play very similarly and um, everything is there you know like the 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 broad number of Pokemon that you can experience the, the big world to explore the um, more higher powered Pokemon kind of hidden and unique or secret places uh, there's there's just so much to experience here and you can see why um, so many of these games feel like they're modeled after this uh, because of the success of these and they still hold up to this day they still play really really well also um, you know just because I think they are earlier titles some of the bugs and glitches in this game are so cool and they're so fun especially once you kind of understand how they work and so yeah Pokemon Red and Blue absolute A tier of games and uh, again very good experiences holding up even uh, to today, and so you could play them right now if you wanted to. Pokemon Yellow, unfortunately, I have not played, and so I know that some some of you are probably like, "What? How can you even be a Pokemon fan?" Uh, but that game is kind of hard to come across nowadays. Um, now you can play it on a ROM, but I just have never uh, had an opportunity to go back and do that. And so, when I did have the opportunity to play Gen One on my 3DS, I, I chose to play the original original rather than Pokemon Yellow. Although I did play the remakes, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Pokemon Gold and Silver, um, they were my first ever Pokemon game. I played these before anything else, and specifically Pokemon Gold, and uh, what an experience. <laughs> the game is just like so broad. It's, it's a lot bigger than Red and Blue, and at the same time, um, the Pokemon selection has grown as well, and so you just you feel like you're being immersed in this big world that you could never truly see every corner of. Um, and yet, you know, so many of us have explored that game uh, to death because it is just such an exciting and fun game. Yeah, these games are some of the best in the series for a reason. The the way that you get to travel through two regions, the way that the world interconnects, uh, and then some of the Pokemon designs and the story, the way that uh, the, the legendary Pokemon interact with the story. This uh, is kind of the pinnacle of a lot of those elements in Pokemon games. Although, it is still before a lot of uh, gameplay changes that would make the, the series a little bit smoother to play. Pokemon Crystal is another one. Um, I believe I played this one. Um, actually, you know what? I don't think I did. I, I think, again, the same thing happened. I never played it back in the day. It's kind of hard to get your hands on, and then when it came to Virtual Console, I would rather replay Gold than get Crystal. But maybe one day I'll play Crystal. I've heard that it kind of just makes some improvements over Gold and Silver. But a very similar experience, and so I'd like to play that someday. Um, Ruby and Sapphire, in my opinion, uh, kind of the A-tier quality of games. Uh, super, super fun games. They're, uh, they're, they're my f some of my favorites for a reason, uh, and that's because that even though I experienced gold first, uh, Ruby and Sapphire were the first games that I completed, and I actually you know, uh, tried to finish up the Pokedex and, and beat the champion even. I, I wasn't able to do that in gold because I was so young. Um, but yeah, Ruby and Sapphire, the graphics made a huge leap here, and uh, the, the way that there's so much water in the game doesn't really bother me. I know that's a hold up for a lot of people, um, but to me, the story and everything is just so memorable, and uh, the moment where you first meet your legendary Pokemon uh, has always stuck with me, and I'll go ahead and skip over to Emerald. Emerald, to me, just improves upon these things. And it adds the Battle Frontier. The Battle Frontier uh, making this experience just that much better. And so, yeah, Pokemon Emerald is an S-tier game, absolutely. Uh, and I guess I said I would order them in the tier. For me, I like it better than Gold and Silver, but I know that's not true for everybody. Fire and Leaf Green. Man, these are A-tier games for sure. Uh, possibly S. Yeah, I'm going to put them in A-tier. Because um, I don't think they're quite on the level of these, but... Uh, I love Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. They're very much like Red and Blue. 
However, they have a lot of additional Pokemon, and they also have the ability to go exploring... Um, I don't remember. I think they're called the Sevi Islands or something like that. But there's like a bunch of new islands with a bunch of uh, different Pokemon to explore after the gameplay is over. And so, yeah, Fire Red and Leaf Green, awesome games, super fun. I also just love the love that went into these games, kind of making up uh, a, a remake, so to speak, you know, for Red and Blue, but making it even uh, have more content and have a, a unique and clever way to include all 300 Pokemon up to that point rather than just the original 150. And so, uh, yeah, we'll probably never see remakes this detailed or good again from the Pokemon Company, unless something uh, very remarkably changes. So, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are also A-tier games. I actually like them better than Ruby and Sapphire, because the scope has grown. Um, a lot of the new Pokemon designs and the love that they showed to evolving old Pokemon and adding baby Pokemon, there's just so much here that is that is to love. And I uh, really enjoyed these games personally as a kid, and I also think that they hold up uh, really well. And unfortunately, the way that they've been remade uh, really didn't do justice to the originals, and so they still kind of hold up as uh, even better than the remakes, which is cool. Pokemon Platinum is the best of the three, in my opinion. I loved the, uh, the new story that it added with Giratina really pushing the graphical capabilities of the DS at the time. And I enjoyed playing through that game so much. Pokemon Platinum, my favorite in that trilogy. Um, but yes, Pokemon Platinum and Diamond. I think I had Pearl, but I had Pearl, and then, of course, I got Platinum later. Um, those two games I put hundreds of hours into as a young teenager. All right, next up we have Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. These are obviously um, A tier, I mean S tier games. I probably would put them ahead of Gold and Silver as well. The ability that you have to pull out a poker partner Pokemon, let it travel with you, and still be able to go and challenge uh, both regions just like in the original games. Once again, this is probably the last of the great remakes. Um, I, I, well, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire are okay, but but um, these, these four games took what the original game had done and improved upon it and expanded on it in a way that was uh, was beautiful and, and arguably made it better than the original source material. And... Uh, Pokemon remakes don't do that anymore, and it's really sad, but uh, Heart, Heart Gold and Soul Silver may be the pinnacle of the entire series in terms of how good the games are. Um, I have a personal attachment to Pokemon Emerald, but I know uh, that's, that's a personal problem, but for most people, these would be the top of S tier. Pokemon Black and Pokemon White. Um, I'm going to put these... Uh, low A tier. No, I'm gonna put them in B tier. They're they're fun. They're really cool. They changed up a ton of things, and a lot of them they got super right. Like going back to the drawing board with all new Pokemon is super cool. I love so many of those new designs. Um, to me, they're often overlooked, and they're not given the credit that they deserve for how creative they were with these games. But a lot of the other things fall flat. Um, the story gets a little bit lengthy at times. Um, I think it got a little too serious for a Pokemon story at times. Also, I think that um, some of the, the gameplay mechanics evolved in ways that weren't necessarily refining things as much as they were overcomplicating or making difficult. Um, you know, I, triple battles were one of the things added that I really uh, di didn't enjoy too much. Um, as well as, like, there were some quality of life changes like TMs. Um, I think this is where they went to having multi-use. But then there were some other things that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Like you still had to have an HM Pokemon. And, and um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the awkward adolescent Pokemon game. You know, it's like it's still trying to find uh, its place of remembering its history and also forging a new path. And so they're good games. Uh, they're really unique setting and they're cool. But uh, their sequels, I think, just did it better. And uh, that's where we get to next, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Now, I did say they did it better, but I haven't unfortunately not played these games. And uh, I am working right now to get my hands on a copy, and uh, just to 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 show you guys, which I guess I'm not I'm not going to pull it up here, but um, Pokemon Black Two and White Two, if you get an authentic copy, they're going for like ninety plus dollars right now. Uh, these games are expensive, and the reason is because uh, they kind of took Black and White's amazing story and new world and uh, just kind of upgraded and made it even better. And so uh, I can't wait to play these for myself. But, uh, again, super, super cool games. I, I wish that I had already played them. Pokemon X and Y is low A tier for me. They're not quite as good as Ruby and Sapphire. Um, 
but I do like the way that they jumped to the 3DS because there are some uh, improvements here. Like, you still have HMs, but they made them so much easier to access. Also, for the first time, EV training is actually understandable and uh, fairly easy, honestly, to implement using the different mechanics that they added. Um, also, the horde hunting for shinies and, and the pokey radar returning. Like, there's so many things about these games that make them fantastic enough to be an A-tier uh, game. The weaker part to me is that some of the Pokemon designs and the limited number of new Pokemon made these uh, not stand out a whole lot. And so some of the newer Pokemon designs just didn't really uh, scratch the itch for me, you know? But I will say the Mega Evolutions are amazing. And um, all of the, the new legendaries look really, really cool. But again, uh, these games were definitely paying a lot of homage to the past because even though um, these games didn't have a lot of new Pokemon, they did include a ton of Pokemon from the past. And so rather than about half and half of the new Pokemon being new, it was like maybe a quarter of the Pokemon in the game being new. Uh, and the rest of them were like from old games. And um, it was just a really fun experience. You know, I think for a lot of people, this was probably their first Pokemon game in a long time. Uh, and so it felt so familiar because of all the Pokemon that you saw in the game that you had grown up with. And so, super cool. Uh, Omega Ruby, uh, ooh, pardon me. <laughs> Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire um, have to be A tier as well because they kind of fit with Pokemon X and Y, in my opinion. Of like, they added some new ideas that really work well and uh, refined the whole process of Pokemon quite a bit. Tried out some new ideas with like having your Lati. Latios or Latios be able to fly above the clouds and move around and there's just a lot here that's really really cool um, my opinion though I don't I don't know I, I guess I would say that maybe they are slightly better than the original games but again they don't really reach the quality of Emerald because they don't have the Battle Frontier which is really sad to me a travesty if they if they had the Battle Frontier these games would be S tier um, without a shadow of a doubt Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire are actually better than Diamond and Pearl as well uh, kind of around the same level of, of game as Platinum. Yeah. Yeah, that looks right. But they're very very good games. Super fun. They're, they're ones that I'll go back to because they are a beautiful remake of some of my favorite games, right? Like Emerald. Also, the music in these games is, is awesome. But again, um, I don't know. I don't think they're quite as good of remakes as Fire Red and Leaf Green or as Heart Gold and Soul Silver are. So, so there's that. Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, man, uh, uh, unfortunately... These were the games that got me back. So I I'd played a little bit of X and Y, and I skipped Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire initially, and I played Sun and Moon. That was my first game really coming back to the series. And they're what got me back into Pokemon. Um, and I loved Pokemon Sun and Moon. I think that they're awesome experiences. I think that they're Pokemon through and through. But looking back now, I have a lot of issues with them. They're very, uh, the gameplay is short. The story is long. And that's not a great mix for Pokemon, um, as well as they're they're it's, it's they're very easy games, you know. Um, a lot of the new Pokemon in that game like were not designed super well. Like they, uh, there's a lot of good looking ones, but like there's the way that they interact with each other and play in the game is is not the greatest. Uh, and then there's just like some mechanics I don't really love, like Pokey Pelago and um, let's see what was the the carnival thing where you can go and you could EV train Pokemon, but it. None of it worked near as good as the player portal from X and Y. And so, yeah, Sun and Moon to me is a step backwards for Pokemon in general. And uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon the same way. But they're slightly better than Sun and Moon just because they added some quality of life things. I think the battle UI looks better, less stylized. But still, uh, yeah, B-tier games, which I guess you're seeing a trend here. The, some, a lot of the newer games are kind of lower on the list here in terms of quality. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee, however, are in the A tier of quality. Um, and then in terms of where they rank as some of my favorites, they're probably back here behind Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Um, so much fun shiny hunting in these games. This was the first time, I believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time in the series that we had overworld shinies where you could see them in the wild like without having to interact with them. And that blew my mind. I, I shiny hunted these games for two months straight just out of the sheer fun of it. I wasn't trading them. I wasn't doing anything with them. I was literally just doing it for my own fun enjoyment because they are so fun to shiny hunt in. Um, yeah, enough said. But these games are awesome. And they are remakes of Pokemon Yellow, which I haven't played. Uh, so the story is kind of cues off of the anime a little bit. And um, so Team Rocket is in there. And yeah, there's so much to enjoy here. And to me, it's just, it was the perfect kind of ode to the past 
of where Pokemon started with Pokemon Red and Blue and Pokemon Yellow. And so, incredible remake games. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh, gosh. These might be the C tier for me. There are some things that are really cool, okay? The DLC, the second DLC especially, I believe it's called the Crown Tundra. Really good in these games. Um, let me see what else nice I can say about it. Uh... <laughs> Man, I don't know. Dynamax was not my favorite. Um, the story was not my favorite. It was long and slow and clunky, a lot like Sun and Moon. Um, shiny hunting in these games is abysmal. It's it's awful and honestly was coded incorrectly. Like the what the way it was supposed to work was not exactly how it worked in the game, which made me think there were some ways it was supposed to be easier, but it wasn't. You know, um, man, I yeah, I can't say a whole lot. Also. This is where we get into what is plaguing the Pokemon series today, which is uh, the, f the quality of the release. Like, there were frame rate drops, and playing online has a lot of, like, sluggishness to it, and yeah, it's regrettable. Sword and Shield, the very first main series console games ever, and they were cool, but they were not great. Um, yeah, unfortunate. Brilliant Diamond and, and Shining Pearl, man. I These are sad to me because I love, love Diamond and Pearl. They're so fun, and they have like a special part of Pokemon history with the Underground and, and uh, Mountain Coronet and the Special Legendaries and Arceus and so many cool Pokemon added. The remakes were buggy as hell, and, and they also like were... They were all over the place in terms of quality. There were elements of them that really gave you a rush from the past, but there are other elements that have been trimmed down and not at all like the old games. And so, yeah, I, to me, they, they really fell uh, way short of what a good Pokemon game should be, um, especially as a remake. I mean, look at what Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire did, and they weren't even the best remakes. But then, like, going back to Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Fire Red and Leaf Green, these games almost improved upon what the original had done, right? Brilliant Diamond and uh, Shining Pearl, they were like a skeleton remake of what these games should have been like in remade form. But what is slightly forgivable about those two is Pokemon Legends Arceus, which, in my opinion, is an A-tier experience. Um, Legends Arceus is really, really cool. What I would call maybe an experiment, like... This game, the shiny hunting is new and fresh. The way that battle works is so cool. It's different than um, any battle system in any Pokemon game to date, right? Um, the way that you can have a party and you can have a Pokemon travel around with you is different than it has been before. Um, the way that you are able to interact with the story and with the overworld, and man, there's just so much. It, it, honestly, it's kind of like the first open world Pokemon game and um, it was kind of foreshadowing to what Scarlet and Violet would bring to the table. But Legends Arceus is an awesome experience, and it just saddens me that we had to have this spin-off, like, ancient history title in order to give us some of the magic from, um, you know, Pearl and Diamond that we were looking for because the remakes from those games just did not deliver. And finally, we come to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And, um, you know, guys, in terms of quality, I've got to put them here. Um... <laughs> But listen to me, because I, I, they are good games, okay? They're, they're open world, which is awesome for Pokemon. It's like, should have been that way for a long time. They, uh, the catching mechanics, shiny hunting mechanics, um, even like the way breeding works and, and EVs work and uh, natures, and like they made so many things, just so much more quality in these games. Unfortunately, with the crunch timeline and the, the quick release schedule and everything, while they added so many quality of life improvements, they also um, made games that were very buggy and also like very slow and, and laggy. And um, they, they were not quality releases at all. And even now, like a year later almost, these games have not been fixed or patched in a way that is going to greatly affect your playtime. I recently played through the Teal Mask DLC, which is actually kind of the reason I'm making this list. And, um, the, and then it's really, really cool. Like, new Pokemon and um, the new region is cool. There's there's some neat shiny hunts that you can do. But the entire time you're playing, especially if you're playing online, you have all kinds of frame drops. Um, for instance, on the top of the mountain in Teal Mask, anytime I go up there to shiny hunt or to walk around, it feels like I'm like 
glitching around because I'm having such a hard time moving because for whatever reason, that part of the map has like lag spikes. And again, um, these games, maybe it's that they're a little too powerful for the Switch. And if they were on more powerful hardware, then maybe they would not have these hangups. But I can't help but feel like it's got to be because they're releasing so many games so fast um, to make as much money as possible. And so we're getting less and less quality games. And so... Scarlet and Violet are fun. They're good experiences as a Pokemon player, but they are very buggy, and they have a lot wrong with them as well. And so, Well, there's my list of uh, Pokemon tier lists scaled by quality first, and then by my favorites inside the tier. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I, what I'd like for you to do is please, in the comments below, tell me what your S tier would be, or tell me a couple of titles that I got absolutely wrong and need to be in a different tier. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you again on ZQ1 Plays real soon. All right, peace out.